Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today guys, let's take one of you guys' recommendations and this one was brought up by Vasil, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but Vasil Kuzmenko he pretty much just said, nice, can you check HLAGF and this is this company guys. Hapag Lloyd. We're going to take a look at what this company does, of course, see the fundamentals and make a determination whether or not if the current share price, this is looking like a buy. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. So let's actually see what this company actually does. And uh, to my surprise, that's not their whole entire name. Hapag Lloyd Octane Gessel Shaft. Yeah, I'm not going to try and pronounce that ever again because I don't want to make a fool of myself ever again. Together with its subsidiaries, operates as a liner shipping company worldwide. Its vessels and containers fleet are used for the transportation of general and special cargo. Various dangerous, very, various dangerous goods. Okay, and coffee. I love how they just have very dangerous goods and coffee. As well as a refer cargo covering pharmaceuticals. Okay, the company also offers a bilateral EDI, a directly connected electronic data and interchange operates an e-commerce portal that provides real-time access to transport data as well as services to manage customer supply chain data and connect their carriers through one interface a mobile app that allows to manage shipping process and provides an email and security so guys they're very very similar to zim oh boy this is gonna be fun because well shipping companies yeah they have a tendency to pay a pretty big dividend and uh i already took a look at this dividend and it's Pretty massive, honestly. So yeah. Now with that said, coming over here now into the calculator, guys. We got the ticker symbol for H L A G F market cap of thirty-eight point one billion dollars, a PE of N A. Now let's actually address this for a second. I don't think that this is N A because of the fact that they just don't make any money. I think this is N A because this is a German company. At least that's my theory on this. So we're not going to get all the numbers for it right i think that's the reason why so work we can pretty much like ignore this share price or maybe just the google spreadsheet is just messing up and it's like picking up the na but nonetheless we got the share price of 230 dollars which is actually down 28.83 percent on the one year and on the year to date guys they're up 12 percent 52 week ranges is 162 dollars and 67 cents to 480 dollars and five cents so we're definitely at the 52 week lows when it comes to this company they do pay out a dividend of, take a look at this, $37.54, which is a massive yield, guys, of 18.5%. We got pretty much like no data here, no payout ratio, no five-year CAGR, and zero years of growth. And you're looking at this, and you're like, oh boy, that's not going to be good. Well, it's actually not as bad as you would think, though it is still a pretty big risk. The reason for this is because... They just don't have five years of data. They first started paying out this dividend in July 10th, 2018. They actually missed paying it out, guys, in 2019. They paid it in 2020 in June. They paid it again in 2021 in May. And they paid it in 2022 in May again. But as you can clearly see, they just don't have enough data. So it's not as bad as you would think, right? But nonetheless, it's still a pretty big risk because they could just not pay it like they did in 2019 or they could cut it. Because again, 18.5%, it is massive. Ex-dividend day is coming up on the 26th of May. Payout day is on the 31st of May and they pay their dividends annually. So only this one time and that's it. And based off of the current shares outstanding, with this $37.54 in annual dividends, they pay out nearly $6.6 .6 billion every single year. And after this is paid in regards to the five-year average free cash flow, they're still left with $78.61 million. But as of their last year's free cash flow, they're still left with $10.8 billion. So yeah, there was a massive spike when it came to the free cash flow last year. Not good though. Honestly, I, I like to see that, you know, the fact that they have a lot of free cash flow left, but not that kind of spike. Not really that good, guys, honestly. These payout ratios end up being 37.86% for the last year's free cash flow, so really under, and 98.82% for the five-year average. So, yeah, that last year's free cash flow was definitely a big outlier. All right, guys, so let's actually take a look at this fundamental, starting, of course, with the net income. Um, yeah, this is, uh, well, if you guys are seeing the screen right now, you guys are probably like, what am I looking at right now? Yeah, five years ago, 42.2 million to one year ago of, um, 
almost 17 billion dollars that is an increase of 40,000 30 percent 40,000 40,000 dear lord you can see it was actually pretty consistently increasing from five to four to three years ago and then from three to two years ago it went from 1.13 billion dollars to 10.3 billion dollars what just happened here now i get it don't get me wrong covid was three years ago over here and shipping rates just skyrocketed and i understand this jump that doesn't mean i like the jump right and then even from two years ago to one year ago it was still another massive jump by a near difference of seven billion dollars going from 10.3 to 17 billion dollars right so almost seven billion dollar difference right there i get that it's increasing guys but already right here this is setting up to make the calculator not work because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow these are two massive outliers that are just going to skew all the, the numbers over so be prepared when you take a look at the calculator but for this for guys i'm going to have to give this like i don't know 25 percent i would think because i get that it is increasing but will shipping rates continue to be this kind of way in the future right four or five years into the future I don't know. Things might come down. Things always come back down to the median, right? So the fact that we just had a, what, $1.13 billion to $10.3 billion in one year, and then from $10.3 to $17 billion, I don't think that will hold. Eventually, I think we'll see these numbers peter out back down to maybe like $500 million or so. Again, I don't know. I'm just giving my opinion on this but this is not normal in the slightest even three years ago wasn't normal i mean it went from 406 million to 1.13 billion yeah that's still even abnormal so i'm gonna give it 25 percent looking at the free cash flow we see the exact same thing though the margin is a little bit smaller five years ago of 852.3 million to one year ago of 17.4 billion you can see a nice steady increase from five to four to two to three years ago actually this one was actually not too bad of an increase from five to three years ago and then after covid it went from three billion dollars three years ago 10.4 billion dollars and then we see another increase of seven billion dollars going from 10.4 billion two years ago to 17.43 that is an increase guys of 1945 percent with an average of 6.7 billion dollars there's a reason why the five-year average free cash flow it is that low right and yet the last year's free cash flow they still have like a 10 billion dollars after that dividend is paid so Again, I don't like it, but seeing that I did give this one 25%, I'm going to give this one, guys, a little bit higher just because the margins are, or at least the differences are less. So I'm going to go with like a 35% on this one. And now looking at the revenue, this one actually looks fairly decent. Still some outliers, but not as the ones that we just saw in those two other ones. We got five years ago of 13.31 billion to one year ago of 33.3 billion, increase of 150%. And we can see a really nice of the increase from five to four to three years ago. The spike here happened, but it wasn't that bad. It went from 15.6 billion three years ago to 25.35 billion, and then from 25.35 billion to 33.3. So it is still a pretty big outlier, but I'm gonna give this one, guys, a way better grade. I'm gonna give this one like a 60% overall. And now the assets minus the liabilities. We see here that within the past five years, they have been in the positive. However, from five to two years ago, fairly flat, right? At around like the $7.5 billion mark, roughly, right? On average. And then from two years ago to one year ago, it just went from $8.2 billion to $18.4 billion. Increase of $10 billion. And then from one year ago to today, they went from $18.4 billion to $26.7 billion, guys. That's massive. That's absolutely massive. Again, that's a pretty big outlier overall. Average total assets is 24.63 billion. Average liabilities is 11.1 .1 billion. Doing this difference, we get 13.6 billion. I'm going to give this, let's see, I gave this one a 35%. And I think I'm going to give this one a little bit better. I think I'm going to give this one like a 40% or so. Again, flat around five to two years ago. And then the spike happened from two to one year ago of around like $10 billion difference. So 
I think a 40% is fair enough. Looking now at the cash flow minus liabilities. Wow, take a look at this, guys. We actually have a positive, two positive numbers, actually. Wow, look at that. One year ago, $5.42 billion in the positive. That means that they had more cash flow than liabilities during this year. That's insane. And even two years ago, they had this as well, $85.9 million. And take a look at this. From five to three years ago, they were actually increasing it, bringing it back to zero. So I'm looking at this and I'm just like, okay, so these two years, the two and the one year ago happened because of this massive jump, right? And those jumps, I don't like, so I'm, I give it a 35%. However, taking out these two years, so, so omitting these two years, we can see that from five to three years ago, they were still bringing it back down to zero at a pretty consistent rate. So you would think that going from $7.8 billion three years ago, sorry, negative $7.8 billion three years ago, maybe if this massive jump would have never happened, maybe it would be at around like $7.7, $7.5 billion, right? Overall, that's actually really good, even though I do not like these two numbers over here and they are in the positive. But nonetheless, we got average cash flow minus the average liabilities. We got negative $4.11 billion. I'm actually going to give this, guys, believe it or not, I'm going to give this a 75%. The reason being is because, well, sure, they did have this massive outliers right here, and that was because of the cash flow up there. However, if you take a look at this, they have been increasing this even before these two outliers, bring it back to zero. I'm digging it because of these two outliers, right? But 75% just because of the fact that prior to that, they were still increasing, which I like to see. And now for the shares outstanding. And when I saw this, when I saw this, I just, I just laughed because I have never seen this aside from one other company. And that one other company is actually buying back a little bit currently. Guys, when it comes to shares outstanding, biggest killer, si well, the silent killer when it comes to investing. You want a company to be buying back shares, ideally. However, the next best thing is if they don't buy or issue any shares. From five years ago to today, 175.8 million shares. They have not changed it. 0% on the five year, 0% from the previous year to the current year. Even though they're not buying back, guys, it is still a 100%. They're not diluting you. And that is all that matters to me. And when it comes to the cash equivalents, they currently hold $14.8 billion. Once again, you see that massive jump, even at the cash equivalent. So they definitely did a really, really good job, you know, one year ago to today. That's really amazing, honestly. And we got the average cash equivalents of $4.42 billion. Looking at the overall grades, guys, we gave them the income of 25%, free cash flow, 35%, revenue, 60%. Assets minus liabilities, 40%. Cash flow minus liabilities, 75%. And the shares were standing up 100% for an overall grade of 52. My main issues is not that there's anything wrong with this company when it comes to, well, anything here, honestly. The main issues that I have is the spikes. That's it. Mainly because it creates uncertainty and I do not know if they're able to replicate this into the future. Now, we did see that they were able to replicate it in two years. Sure, like one year ago, and uh, sorry, in some cases, two years ago and one year ago, but I still consider those outliers. I at least need to see like three or four years of that kind of increases in the billions of dollars year over year in order for me to be like, okay, this is pretty much going to continue this way. That's the main reason why I gave this a 25 and 35% over here and a 40% in the assets minus liabilities. Honestly, if it wasn't for that, this would easily, easily be like an 80 percent company so for me my my opinion 52 percent mainly because of the uncertainty of the outliers for you guys it may be something different all right guys now let's actually take a look at for the current share price of 230 dollars this is looking like a buy now we're gonna make revenue growth assumptions and predicted share buyback assumptions and putting a required rate of return of 10 percent we're gonna use scanning free cash flow to see what price we should pay for this company's cash flow in the future today so before we've been putting anything Take a look at this. Not adjusting for that, guys. $2,800. $2,800. Not adjusting for debt. Not adjusting for debt. Uh huh. $5,732. Yeah. That's a thing. That's a thing. And the reason for this is very, very simple. Guess what? 
these massive outliers when it comes into the revenue, when it comes to the free cash flow, and when it comes to the net income. This is what I mean that when it comes into these kinds of metrics, guys, you can't have massive outliers in either direction, really in either direction, because you can't really make a good prediction when it comes to this. You need a nice, smooth, and steady increase. And this is exactly the result you get when you don't have a nice, smooth, and steady increase. But we're still going to, I guess, uh, entertain this, right? Because at the end of the day, this is absolutely insane. So let's actually come over here and see that the revenue forward is 11.5%. Now I'm gonna go a lot lower than that. I'm gonna go with like three for the low assumption, four for the median and five for the highest assumption. And for the projected share buyback guys, let's face it, they have not issued any shares. I don't think that they'll issue any shares. So we're gonna go with zero, zero and zero across the board. Now, if you guys would actually like to, actually, you know what? No, I'm, I'm gonna change that back. Let's go with zero. Let's go with, actually, let's go with zero as the median assumption, right? Let's go with zero as the median assumption. Let's put negative 0.5% for the worst one. And for the high one, let's put 0.5%. That way we get to see what happens if they actually issue shares or if they buy back shares. Now, again, these numbers are ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Not just seeing for debt, this is $3,125 to $3,384.83. And then adjusting for debt, this shoots up by $3,000, $6,335.50 to $6,854.46. With a margin of safety of 5, 10, 50%, this is between $5,385 to $6,511.74. The reason for this is two main things. As I said, the first one, the spikes, it messes everything up. Number two is 175.8 million shares outstanding that's not a lot of shares guys it really really isn't so you have the market cap that the calculator comes up with dividing it by a really really tiny number of 175.8 million you're going to get a massive massive share price that's the reason why now i would actually like to provide you guys two more things to think about and that is let's actually come over here and i would actually like to change these numbers right let's see what would have happened if instead of going from like 1.1 billion in net income to 10 billion if they went from like 1.1 billion to like 1.5 billion right let's actually change these numbers up and see what we would actually get and then we're going to take a look at the book value to see what kind of valuation the book value actually gives this company so for the net income i would actually like to change this to 1500 so 1 1.5 billion and then let's actually increase the one year ago to let's say two billion dollars now for the cash flow the capital expenditures roughly i mean it didn't roughly but it wasn't as much of a jump when it came to the capital expenditures than it did for the cash from operations so we can see that the cash from operations was increasing by one billion dollars pretty much every time so let us go with four four five uh four point five billion dollars right and then let's go with like five 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 billion dollars right so 5.5 .5 billion dollars and now when it comes into the revenue let us put this at around well we can see again increased by one billion dollars roughly year over year prior to this massive jump so let's go with 16 billion dollars right 16 billion dollars uh actually let's put 16 6 billion dollars okay and then let's actually go with like uh, let's go with 18 let's go with 18 billion dollars on this one and now let's actually see what the share price would have been if they didn't have the spikes now again these are just my numbers these aren't the real numbers but with this guys we get the share price to be $542.91 to $587.90. Not adjusting for debt. Not adjusting for debt, it is $1,169.77 to $1,260.60. It is still a massive jump for the ones after debt, but mainly because they just don't have debt. I mean, we just saw the cash flow minus liabilities to be positive, right? So they really do not have a lot of debt in regards to their net income as well as the cash and equivalents. So not surprised that this is jumping up by like more than 500 bucks. But as you can clearly see, $542.91, a lot more reasonable than what it was before. So again, this is what I'm talking about, that you can't have outliers when it comes to discounted free cash flow. It messes everything up.
So let's actually use book value, guys, to make a determination of what kind of price we should pay for this company. Because this kind of guys all does not work. And doing book value, guys, we can see that as of today, they're worth $151.71. Okay, that is up 268%, though. This graph looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? And in regards to the tangible book value, again, this graph looks kind of familiar, too. As of today, they're worth $131.74. This is up $596. These valuations in regards to the price divided by the current book value and tangible book value become 1.52 and 1.75. So as it currently stands with a current share price of 230, it is looking expensive, but you can see only paying what 0.52 higher than what a company should be worth and even 0.75 to me, it isn't really that bad. Assuming, assuming that you believe that they'll keep doing that exponential growth when it comes to those profit metrics. If you believe that you're paying 0.52 a premium, it will be insane. But if they don't do that, that might be a little bit of an issue. And as you can clearly see, guys, when it comes to this company, it is very, very difficult to analyze overall, especially using this kind of free cash flow. But this is why I give this calculators for free for everybody to have. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And this is not financial advice. I gave the weighted grades for this company, guys, of a 52%. You guys might give it higher. You guys may, you know, use book value. You guys may use this kind of cash flow. But nonetheless, I still have them available for free because I want you guys to be making your own assessments when it comes to this. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. I'll say that one more time. It's not financial advice. Please make your own due diligence when investing into any company because you can lose money. So a company like this is risky. I'm not telling you guys what to buy. I'll never tell anybody what to buy. I don't know your financial situation. So if you really, really want this company, guys, please read their 10Ks for yourselves. Please read their 8Ks. Uh, go further deep. See what they're doing. You know, look at management. Do all this stuff, right? Because I can't really do it all. It would be impossible. It would be absolutely impossible for me to do a deep dive into every single company that you guys recommend is literally impossible. That's why I give you guys the tools in order to be able to do that. I have this discounted free cash flow for free, the book value for free, and a revaluation and even a dividend tracking sheet for everybody to have. Which, by the way, I finally fixed. If you guys would like a video on this, guys, I would be more than happy to. Um, I don't know if the owner of the macro would be okay with me doing it. I, you know, I, I, I figured out, I figured out how to fix it, but I really would like to talk to him, investing sensei, and get his approval because if he wants to make a video, I, it's not my position at all to make a video on how to fix it. So yeah, but nonetheless, I did fix it. I'm giving this all for free, guys, all for free. I don't have any sponsorships. You know, the best way that you guys can help me out, guys, is just. Like, subscribe, comment. It really does help. I recently incorporated Boy. Uh, he's my friend. I, I call him Boy, but his name is Mikhail Kirsnowski. He mainly does technical analysis. So if you guys are interested in a technical analysis approach on things, you know, I don't know if he's taking re for recommendations right now. I'll, I'll ask him. But um, if you guys want him to take a look at a company and make a video on, on a company, stop by one of the videos that says technical analysis and uh, ask for one, right? He might respond and tell you yes, tell you no, or whatever, right? So... Yeah, we're now incorporating, we're growing the channel. Thank you all for your support. That's the only way, by the way, that I was able to, to actually do that is just by you guys, like, subscribing, commenting. It really does help. And of course, sharing. We're so close to 2,000 subscribers, guys. And at 2,000, I do plan on doing something really, really special. So if you guys want to see that, make sure to share. And if you guys like this kind of investing when it comes to a fundamental perspective and now a technical analysis per perspective, make sure to just like, subscribe, comment. It really does help. Also, guys, I would like a favor from everybody. I recently put out a pretty big question on my community posts, and I really would like it if you guys were to go down there and answer it. It's just a poll. Yes or no. It's a pretty big thing. Well, at least in my opinion, it's pretty big and it would change something drastic of this channel. And I will have the link to that community post in the description below. So if you guys could do that, that would be awesome. Looking at this company in regards to a dividend though, let's actually take a look at this guys, because $37.54, it's massive. Not the biggest that we have seen, but it's massive, right? That's a yield of like, what, what, what did they say? 18.5% crazy. Putting in $5,725, this gets you 24.89 shares, which is an annual dividend. Oh dear Lord. Of 
$934.46, quarterly of $233.62, and a monthly of $77.87. Now, they do pay annually, so you will get this dividend only one time a year, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter if you get it annually, quarterly, or monthly, because you will eventually get the total sum. If it's quarterly, you will still get it annually by the end of the year. So it really doesn't matter how this is distributed. What matters is the annual income at the end of the year. So $934, guys, that's massive. Absolutely massive. The issue is, is that, well, in regards to their free cash flow, well, I, th I changed the, the numbers, but remember, they were very, very close to their five-year average free cash flow at 98%. And on top of that, they do not have a lot of years of actually paying off this dividend, right? They had, they paid it in 18, they missed in 19, and then they paid 20, they paid 21, and they paid 22. That's it. So they've only had technically three years of consistent dividend payments. That's a risk. They could cut this. I don't know. So please do your own due diligence when it comes to this dividend. It's it may not be safe. Most dividends are not safe. This one may be safe if they continue those profit metrics, but as it currently stands, it's a definite gray area. All in all, thank you so much for the recommendation. This was absolutely an insane company. Absolutely insane company. Wow. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. My final thoughts is just that if it has the ability to continue those profit metrics the way that they have been doing within the past two years, this is looking like a banger. But then again, I don't know, right? Because it's a massive outlier. It's not a nice smooth curve. That's the main issue I have with this. That pretty much does it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help over the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow me on my YouTube sites. Link in the description below. So with that said, peace out. And I will see you all in the next stock analysis of video.